It's a uh, breakfasting camp. Uh, people are collecting their water here from the um, from the, the lorry, and you can see looking around. This is the giant curving arc of the uh, Marathon des Sables tents, with 1,300 competitors all sleeping in them. You can't really see, probably because of the sun flare, but we're heading out in this direction tomorrow when the race starts, straight into some sand dunes, which frankly look about a thousand feet high. And that's where we're going from the start. So I'm here just in the camp, so I'm right in the centre of the crescent. Uh, you can see all the way around me, you've got all the tents where people stay. There's eight people in each tent, you can see their open sign as well, so the wind just blows straight through them. It was cold last night, it gets down to, I'm guessing, about five degrees. in the middle of a sandstorm working my way through a dry lake bed uh, towards checkpoint two. Uh, seems to be a lot of people going a little bit too hard today. Anyway, I'm going to keep pushing on.
So, uh, end of day one. Uh, it was an absolutely brutal day today. Apparently one of the toughest first days. Um, as we went about three kilometres run straight into some huge sand dunes, which lasted for me three hours in the baking of the proper sand, sandy sandwiches like you'd get in the movies. And you had to manage your water and I couldn't go as fast as I wanted to because I was worried about my water. Uh, got to checkpoint one, got some more water, and then we thought we were going to have a flat section, and it was flat, except it was quite thick sand, and then we had a huge pool of uh, sand stores, um, and then we got until checkpoint two. And checkpoint two was in a disused mine, which was really cool, and it felt like we were running along Mars. Um, and then I picked up some more water, and then we did a, a, a leg from there, a cross between two kind of small mountains uh, and I actually kind of ran out of food for the day I felt very shaky so I actually ate into some of my evening meal just to get me through the day and then uh, the final killer was about four to six kilometers of sand dunes right at the end that were exhausting uh, and at one stage my heart rate went up well beyond what is deemed sensible for these kind of temperatures um, and that was a brutal, brutal finish. Um, I finished in just under seven hours for day one, which sounds like a long time, but um, apparently it's pretty okay for the sort of day that we had. Um, spent a bit of time with Rory Coleman, which was quite good fun. And um, I think all in all, I don't know yet, but I think I've come somewhere around 400 to 500. Um, but apparently the website's down, uh, and I can't be bothered to walk a kilometre from where our tent is just here um, to go and have a look on the horse. Um, sun's going down soon here, it's only quarter to seven, but to be honest I'm just going to go to bed because we've got the same thing all over again tomorrow, but worse. Um, so that's that, uh, and that's the end of my first day. Uh, two small blisters on my toes, despite the fact that I taped all of my toes, so I actually got blisters underneath the tape. Um, but other than that, that's, that's my day one. Absolutely amazing day, an absolutely brutal day, um, but really, really enjoyable still.
so we're about 20k in and uh, for the second day running I'm wondering whether I've got enough calories because I'm feeling a little bit like a little bit sugar shaky and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that I get happy for someone else's loss but as I'm walking along somebody else has dropped their um, desiccated pineapple pack so being a good person I am I've cleared the desert up but in doing so I've also gained myself some nice sugary desiccated pineapple so they lost my gain and I clean the desert up so I don't feel too bad about it um, we're about five miles from the next checkpoint um, and it's been some very very open terrain today it's beautiful Okay, so coming into checkpoint 3 on day 2. Uh, checkpoint 3 is at 34 kilometers. Uh, this is the last bit of thing. I uh, managed to scrub even more food off the ground. I managed to find some shot blocks on the ground for me. Kept the packaging. Um, I'm definitely short calories. I need the calories during the day. I'm getting the sugar shakes from being so tired. So uh, I've actually eaten my evening meal just after checkpoint two, I've put water in it. And I've walked along through the Sahara, uh, listening to John Mayer and eating a chicken korma. So that was, uh, that was something I never thought I'd do. Uh, coming up to checkpoint three means a little bit more water. Um, and it's just coming up, but what, I, what is looming is those mountains. Now on the camera, they probably don't look too epic. Well, I can assure you they look epic to me. Um, I know from the course book we're going to be going over them. So just as a final uh, mess with our heads at the end of the day, we've now got a final 6k after the checkpoint climbing over this mountain to get to the camp for the night, which is going to be brutal. So in a way I'm quite pleased that I took on the 1,000 calories of chicken korma to help me get over that because I got very shaky. The good news is I'm going to have a rejig on my calories generally and steal food from later on in the week and I'll explain maybe later on another video how I can get away with that um, and that's it other than that just chugging along really it's hot it's dusty there's a lot of sandstorms uh, and you just got to keep going no matter how much it hurts so uh, there you go let's get chugging three done hopefully I'll be finished in the next two or three hours Okay, so, uh, in the day two, uh, a different day from day one, a little bit more opportunity to run in the morning while it was cooler, while it was flat, but um, by checkpoint one slash halfway through checkpoint, past checkpoint one, I switched to a power water to take my water. Again, I've hit every checkpoint just running out of water, which is the limit of what I can do. Uh, I actually thought it was an easier day today, slightly easier day, although it's longer. Um, it's interesting to find out the stats on the day one. Uh, it turns out we probably had the toughest day one this, this race has ever had. Uh, officially, uh, nearly 100 people were climbed down. Uh, so we nearly lost 10% of all the runners on the first day. Uh, but it was so brutal that Patrick's allowed almost all the time, extra time to come through today. So uh, there was even a way to go I had a good day actually. It's amusing to see it again, very, very easy. Uh, the time going through some uh, a village in an oasis with little kids and, uh, and then running up a couple of mountains.
Attention au départ 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, So, uh, start of day three, I'm about 7k in on the course. Um, my calorie problem seems to have improved. Um, there are bins outside everybody's tent in the evening, and this morning they had a bit clear up, and some people were obviously dumping weight for too much food that they'd taken. Uh, so I was lucky enough to get myself uh, two meals. So that's a 2,000 calorie gain for me, which is perfect. Um, so basically I've been dumpster diving, so that's the new, a new low for today, but I'm quite pleased about it. Um, we're currently working our way through some dunes, which are foot causing a walk, you kind of have to. Um, a lot of people dropped out yesterday, about 60. Um, a lot of people dropped out. And they keep extending the checkpoint times, which I, is a sign I think that they think it's a little bit tougher than they expected it to be. Um, other than that, just another day really. So we'll get to another checkpoint in about 3k, uh, get some water, I think we get two bottles of water at the next checkpoint which is good, but the key to today just like yesterday is just managing my water and my energy levels, because if you push it too hard you just get dehydrated uh, and end up in the medic tent, so there you go. Uh, okay, so a couple of other things I've learned while I'm desert running. Uh, if you don't have your buff up around your nose and mouth, not only do you not look as cool, uh, but you end up with a nosebleed all the time. You get so much sand up your nose, you're basically snotting out rocks every couple of hours. It's actually making me wheeze at night. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing I've learned, <laughs> running out in the desert. When I say running, I mean moving in any way I can. That's it, really. <laughs> So yeah, getting back to the food thing, because I was finding I was just getting the sugar shakes between checkpoint one and two yesterday, and ate my meal to sort it out, what I've done this morning is instead of having a 400 calorie breakfast and some nuts, I've had a 1000 calorie spaghetti bolognese cold for lunch. It was a proper low point, I can tell you those meals are gruesome cold. Um, they have that waxy stick, stick to the top of your mouth kind of feel that you get from pasties in motorway service stations. Um, as a result of having that and a pulsing bar and uh, some nuts already, I'm rocking along today, I feel way better. So some people it's all about lots of food after the race and can't eat much while I'm running. For me, I need loads during. It's just everybody's different, so you need to be flexible with your plan uh, to be able to cope with whatever you find you need when you're out here. Um, so it's afternoon day three, after checkpoint two. Having a bit of a low to be honest. It's blisteringly hot out here. Probably, it. I'm going to guess over 40 Celsius. I'm very aware of the state of water I've got, about 800 mil to see me through five kilometres, which is going to take me nearly an hour. So I'm going to come up a bit short of water, I think, which is a worry. So I need to back it off, but just my first low of the race, I think. I'll try to put some sugar in, 
turning the music up a bit and hopefully it'll pass but uh, it's quite tough at the moment it's just this blistering heat right we're off um, well here we are we're just on our way towards um, checkpoint three still desperately short of water but I've perked up a bit actually after having some sugar I've met up with Kerry here uh, Kerry's an evolution rebreather diver so we're talking tech diving uh, in a dry lake bed which just seems quite appropriate really but uh, as is always the case being a diver you can't help but find divers and pilots whenever you're out running somewhere so uh, I've actually perked up a little bit now I feel a little bit better and we should be at the checkpoint in a couple of kilometres but as you can see it's pretty desolate out here so, top little tip there, I uh, just start to get little hot spots on my heels where it feels hotter, it feels like it's starting to rub. So rather than push on even just for another 1,500 metres for the checkpoint, I've sat down in the baking heat and dealt with it straight away. Um, time to tell whether I've done it quick enough, but the point is some people will push on and say I'll deal with it at the checkpoint, at which point you could have two massive blisters, which you then can't really do a lot about. So. Uh, despite the fact that you can watch maybe 20 people overtake you and go past you in the grand scheme of things it's pointless to six day race it's completely pointless to, to panic about it just stop early when you think you've got a problem so nearly at the checkpoint now about 1.5k or so to go as usual to mess with your mind you can never see the checkpoints coming they always seem to hide them behind something so you never know when it's there until you get over the crest of a hill and you're almost on top of it so I'll guzzle my water, chuck two salt tablets in the bottles and be prepared for the next checkpoint. There's usually about 50, 60 people milling around in the shade, just resting. I tend to blast straight through checkpoints. Uh, for me, during the day, it's the three, three checkpoints where I tend to get significant uh, lumps ahead of people because uh, I just grab my water and push it through. I'm also getting a bit sunburned today on my legs and slightly on my arms, all on the left-hand side where the sun's been all day. I'm sprayed, sprayed, and I'm still getting burned. There's not a lot I can do about it now. Um, we've had the full heat of the sun today. Today's been brutal with the heat. Just brutal. I think, I think the camp is going to be a mess tonight. I'm going to guess we're going to see another 50, 60 people drop out. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, and here is uh, my good friend Mule, who about this time of day I tend to bump into. <laughs> Wave and say hi to Intoba, Muley. Hi, Intoba. <laughs> well, uh, Mule and I will catch up. We tend to catch up about this time of day. See how everything's going. Uh, so we'll get on to this checkpoint and we're done. So it's 6.44 a.m. and um, I'm off to the water station here, this is where the water is, so between half six and half seven you collect your water ration for the first section. You get a stamp on a card here, they click it through. I'm now halfway through my water rations for the week, so I'll get another clip stamp on here for today. It's a long day today, so just a short 84 kilometre run for 18 hours or so through sand dunes. Um, <coughs> uh, here we go. Get ready for chaos. <laughs> what also happens, whether you like it or not, is the Bedouin, the Berber, work their way around the tent from 6am uh, and they just completely flatten the camp. So whether you're up or whether you like it or not, at 6am, they roar through here like reverse doozers and deconstruct the whole camp in front of you while you're desperately trying to tape up your toes and eat breakfast. It's glorious. So, day four, long stage, 84k. Key to today is pacing yourself because it's quite a long run. Um, when I say run, I mean walk. It's really hot. Uh, apparently it was 40 Celsius and basically zero humidity yesterday, which gave about another 20 people a pasting and they've dropped out. Um, 
We're just heading up to checkpoint one. I feel surprisingly good, probably because I've had about 2,000 calories for breakfast from my dumpster diving. And uh, after checkpoint one, we've got the uh, Jebel El Utfal, which is the kind of famous mountain that people go over with the rope and everyone has a miserable time. Uh, so there'll be a sure and amazing view, but at the moment I'm looking at the mountains and I can't entirely figure out which bit we go over. Um, but maybe it's a bit further down. One of the things I've noticed with this race is they mess with your mind a lot with checkpoints, so you often don't see a checkpoint until you're basically on top of it. They're often hidden. So uh, today is just about tabbing it out. 17 to 18 hours it's going to take me based on my estimates um, on this sort of train and the sand and the heat. 5k an hour is pretty much all I can manage without running out of water. If I go any faster, I run out of water. Uh, and this race is as much about water and energy management as anything else. There's a possibility as the night goes down and it gets cooler, if I've still got energy, I may go back into a run for the final sort of 20-30k, but that's a very weird strategy for an ultra. Um, and we'll see how I actually feel when we get there. Because yesterday I was shattered when I got across the line, I was really tired. So, I will do another video later when I'm sure I'll be far less chipper. Well, here I am at the world's biggest clusterfuck. We're completely stuck. Moving very, very slowly with a lot of rocks that are very, very loose which is quite dangerous and we're stuck here because we're going so slowly because the people above are slow and there's a danger some of these rocks will come loose and twat people below which is frustrating on the plus side I get to stop and have a rest in the room but this is a giant queue currently going up the mountain Uh, so we're past the Jebel which was a nightmare. Beautiful descent off it, sort of going down a dried riverbed. Uh, I feel epic, so I've gently jogged down it and jogged to the dunes. We're now back in the good old dunes, you can see, which is all we seem to do here. So it's a real trudge now. I've still got probably 5k to the checkpoint. I've got about 600 mils of water um, and I burn more than that in an hour. So. Um, I'm going to hit the checkpoint short water, so which means I've pushed as hard as I physically can without risking dehydration. Again, this race is sometimes about even backing off when you feel like you've got loads of energy, um, just to save water and avoid having a saline drip in your arm in the evenings and a punch against your car. Um, that's it really. I'm sure we'll cut to video later today where I'm feeling miserable but for now it's about 15k done out of 84 and I'll just keep chugging through now to the next checkpoint. I suspect we've got a couple of k of dunes here which is going to take me nearly an hour to get through because walking on sand this soft is disastrously tiring. Anyway. Uh, it's not all epic when you do an ultra. Um, sometimes it's tough and right now it's tough. It's two in the afternoon. It's ridiculously hot. We've got midday sun beating down on me. Short of water. Picked up water from the last checkpoint. Eating a load of peanuts which are dry as hell but I need the calories. I'm hoping the calories will kick in soon because I think that's part of the reason why I'm feeling so down. That I feel down and despondent at the moment. 
I'm even thinking about getting out of the sun at checkpoint 3 and maybe even sleeping for an hour uh, and carrying on later. I just feel very tired, like I want to sleep. The scenery is beautiful, stunning, but I'm in a properly dark place. I knew this would happen today and I knew I'd get a couple like this, but this is the first one of the day. So, we just passed through an oasis and uh, Rory Coleman was there uh, and he had the genius idea, there's a kid standing with a hose and uh, I've just got dunked under the hose with my head completely soaked and it's made the world a difference, imagine that. First time I've had water poured over me since Friday, it's now Wednesday, um, it's made a massive difference how I feel. Uh, we've got the elite runners going past at the moment. Uh, they set off at 11 o'clock on the long day instead of 8, so three hours behind us. I've seen about the top 15 elite men go past, including David Helland of the UK. I've just shouted abuse at him as he's gone past. And uh, that's that really. I'm just going to chug on till checkpoint 3. Ten minutes ago, if you'd asked me, I would say that I was looking at doing a one hour sleep at checkpoint 3 out of the midday heat, but after that cold water over me, I feel colossally better. I still don't feel brilliant, but I feel way better than I did. So, just went my way through this beautiful scenery, and just take it easy at the moment because it's midday heat, and uh, I really feel like I'm bordering on being in trouble. So I'm going to have to take it super easy, and balance food with water and energy levels and keeping cool. So you go. Okay, so that's checkpoint three done. I just walked for a good 5k with absolutely no water. I was convinced we were just getting to the checkpoint at various points as you go over the next hill, no checkpoint. Went over a massive sandy hill, no checkpoint. Went over another mountain, no checkpoint. Um, really low on water. Got, got uh, Steve Dietrich saw me uh, near the CP and told me to take a, a metric ton more salt uh, which I'm going to do. I've just massively double loaded all my water. He says we're all in danger of dehydration today. Um, uh, and then in the midday sun I had an amazing brainwave which in retrospect was a, a moment of absolute madness. So um, I decided my feet are super hot, which they are. I've got a heat rash underneath my gaiters again. Massive chronic heat rash. Um, so I thought, well I'm not on sandy territory why not just roll the gaiters off and let my feet cool down for a bit, smart man, and then just put them back on when I get near the sand. So I do that for five minutes and accumulate a metric tonne of sand in my shoes, having avoided getting any sand in my shoes the last four days. So, as a result, I've had to stop twice, completely uh, take off my shoes, my socks, uh, and everything, which in this heat with this amount of tape is a disaster. Uh, I've had to retake loads of parts of my feet, completely dust off all the sand, uh, and it's probably cost me 20 minutes at a checkpoint. So, uh, what a retard. I really, <laughs> that was just stupid. So, uh, another day learning about desert life. Uh, I'll be keeping those on from now on. Uh, not getting any special ideas. Uh, now it's just a high speed burn to checkpoint four, which is 10k away, which in the state I'm in, it's gonna take about two hours. The good news then is the sun will set, the temperature will drop from 40 to about 10, at which point I'll start feeling like a human being again. And actually my legs are fine, my energy levels are good, it's just tabbing out and keeping my water managed. If I go any harder I'll run out of water at the moment and be in a proper disaster. So, uh, another 10k to do, I'll maybe do another little message as the sun sets. Um, and I'm going to eat a bit of food on the way when the sun sets, I promised myself, a chilli and rice dinner, not made with a stove, freeze-dried, crunchy and unlikely to be fully rehydrated for dinner, so I'm living the dream today. And that's it. <laughs> on a separate note, I just had a briefest of forays with Doc Trotters uh, who patch up all the blisters. There's plenty of people whose feet are a total mess. I have no blisters at all uh, on my feet because I'm not an idiot. 
and I preemptively tape up all the hot spots and sit and stop and deal with any problems as they happen. But I'm low on tape, mainly because I've been taping up all the guys in the tent. So, uh, I'll go over to Doc Trotters and say, can I just have some tent tape please? I'll, I'll tape myself up. And they almost didn't know what to do. They, they, it, it completely phased them. The guy kept saying, have you got blisters? And they kept saying, no, I just need some tape so I can prevent having blisters. And it, it blew his mind, to be honest. Uh, I obviously don't get this level of preemptive. Uh, they just don't get don't get runners that think this far ahead because it, he was completely didn't know what to do. So eventually, I managed to get some tape and scissors off them, and then they watched as I kind of gave them a masterclass in pre-taping, which was odd. So there you go. Uh, I know people have huge praise for Doc Process, but uh, my experience so far is that they were utterly bemused by my request. Um, I don't think they're used to normal people that aren't broken coming to them. So there you go, Doc Trotters. Uh, I wasn't technically in the tent, I was just borrowing tape, just for the record. You know, I think if anyone was to ask me any advice that I could give them for doing the Marathon Day Sabre, uh, I think the key to success with this race is to whip, whip, and then nay nay. Whip, whip, nay nay. Whip whip, no, no. I think uh, ultra running isn't that sexy. Uh, here's one of the less sexy moments of it. I've now got a massive nosebleed from all the sand up my schnozzle. I've just blown it and basically blown a vein, I think. Uh, but here you go. Here's the sort of picture you wouldn't get for people doing the epic marathon de sable. Me with my nose bunged up with tissue because it's bleeding like a trooper. Still, I'll probably look quite cool with all the blood around my face. Uh, oh look, another ascent. <laughs> another hill to climb. So, just power walking up this hill. I might even have a wee soon, which will be my first one in about three hours. It should be amazing. Um, I'm up on a ridge. We're staying on the ridge. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Just some of the most beautiful running I've ever done. I've got to be 2,000 feet up here uh, on a plane that's 3,500 feet above sea level and I'm, the sun's setting. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Um, it's been an agonising day but, but still the scenery on this race is just unbelievable. Just like running in Mars, running in the mountains, running in the sand dunes, running in deep sand dunes. It's so varied, it's so interesting. Lost cities that have been abandoned, lost villages, oasises. Oasai? What's the plural? What a race. I mean, forget toughest foot race on earth. This is just the most stunning foot race I've ever done. It's amazing. So, let me tell you why this is going to be a very weird day. This is about 84k, which is about 50 miles or so. It's an ultra for one day. Uh, I've already run three days in the past as well. We've had 40 degree, 42 degree searing heat again today, zero humidity. And it's been exhausting. And I've had to slow down to manage my water, which has been right on the threshold of being in trouble. But for the first time on this race, the sun's about to go down and I'm still racing. And here's where it gets interesting because multi-day racing, check. Running with a backpack on, check. Running in 10 degrees Celsius, check. Uh, running 50 miles plus, check. This is my domain. As this sun sets and the temperature drops, for the first time ever in an ultra, I'm going to have power walk the first half and run the second half. So I'm about to try and gain about a hundred places by running through the night because my legs feel fine. It's just been water that's been the issue. I'm going to get some food at the next checkpoint and eat it while I move. And once it's eaten, I'm going to absolutely pelt it because running at night is what Brits are really good at. So we shall see. Well, it's uh, half past midnight, so I've been running now for four plus 12, 16 hours. Yeah, 
and uh, the night stretch has got cooler which is good for me I've tipped two bottles of water over me and um, <coughs> I made some progress I did some running between one of the checkpoints I did a whole 10k running which is amazing um, and now it's just basically a slog back to the CP but it's nice and cool out here um, my feet are quite hot but I'm generally all right um, but the night stretch has been much easier because uh, the weather feels like the UK um, so I'll be home I'll get to bed about 4 a.m. at the rate I'm going at the moment I've had a bit of food at the last checkpoint so that'll be the last time I eat out on the course uh, I'll go to bed at 4 and that's that I'll deal with everything else tomorrow um, but today has been brutal and talking to some of the other runners on the course it looks like the the session between checkpoint 2 and 3 was absolute chaos for water and not nearly enough so it wasn't just me that ended up in a lot of trouble. Um, that's that, so I might do another quick video at the finishing line. Good morning, welcome to camp. I'm currently walking uh, through the middle of camp. Uh, if you have a look all the way around, it's a giant semicircle of hundreds of tents, about three tents, three Berber tents deep, and that's where all the runners are. Uh, and it's a giant semicircle kind of horseshoe shape. We happen to be the furthest tent away from all everything else, so we tend to just stay within our tent, to be honest. Um, last night's finished. There are still people out on the course. So we started at 8am yesterday, and there are some people that will still be coming in at 4 o'clock today in the afternoon. Um, I got in after 19 hours. Uh, some of the these lads in my tent were in after 10. <laughs> this is mind-blowing. Uh, some guys came in at 22. Some came in it later than that. Um, we seem to pretty much be the only tent with eight people left. Um, Tom's had a, a rotten time with his feet, so I'm just going over to bring some water to him. He's in Doc Trotters. And Doc Trotters is the uh, voluntary medical people that look after your feet. Uh, and I'm going to do a little tour of that as well, just to show you what Doc Trotters looks like. One of my aims coming to the Marathon des Sables was to never visit Doc Trotters. And so far, I have succeeded. So um, my feet are blister free, incredibly. They are horribly blotchy from heat rash from the gaiters and they are also um, just very sore and hot but they are not blistered so I'm very lucky. I'm a little bit stiff this morning but generally pretty good. Yesterday was just brutal. It was the long day and it was just savage. Um, you're fighting sleep deprivation, extreme exhaustion. And remember these guys aren't doing a standard marathon where you can just have as much food as you want off the checkpoint table. Uh, there are people yesterday, I know for a fact, did this on 800 calories. So I want you to kind of get your head around that for a second. That's a couple of bowls of cereal and they did probably a five and a half, six thousand calorie deficit yesterday. So you're fighting all sorts with this race. Uh, exhaustion, dehydration, total lack of food, it's colossal. So we've got a rest day now, quote unquote. Uh, so you take it easy for the day. We're just going to sit in the tent and stay cool. Um, eat some food, get some sleep, uh, get ready for another marathon tomorrow. So we've got a 42 or 43 kilometre course tomorrow. We'll start all over again. So there you go. Uh, I'll do another little tour later when I find the next place. So this is the Doc Trotter's tent. This is where everyone gets their feet done. So they come in here. And they get patched up by an absolute army of volunteers who do a sterling work keeping everybody blisters dealt with and patched up. I've been fortunate enough to not come in here yet. So this is where endless blisters are done. I think they, the stat was they treated five, six hundred people on the first day. So they just people just all sit there and get done. So there you go, so stop crosses. Here we are at the start. There's somebody walking across just by that big Jeep and another person walking across there. And another walk in there, they've just come in, it's 11 in the morning. So I came in at 2 o'clock last night, and they're just coming in now. They've been out there and all of this. There's another person crossing the line now, which is insane. I, you know, the time on your feet and being cooked, they're having a far tougher job than people that are running faster. Uh, and then over here is the medical tent, uh, which is fantastically empty. So there's nobody in any particular diet trouble in there at the moment, which is great. I had a look in there two nights ago and there was all sorts of carnage in there. So that's the final one, that's the medical tent that looks after that. So there's Doc Trotters and then you can see from the distance here the, the sea of the main camp, the horseshoe shape of the main camp. So that's the 
tour of the camp, it's actually pretty big. I'd say it's a couple of kilometres across. And obviously on the move, it's about 2,000, just over 2,000 people on the move. And they break this down and move it once a day. It's an absolutely colossal job. And it's done incredibly well and incredibly efficiently. So there you go. So this is tent life. I don't have a stove to save weight, so I'm currently heating somebody else's porridge that they've kindly given to me. So I'm on a calorie deficit. This is Phil. He's having a rotten time keeping anything down. So him and I are currently trading goo gels for solids, which is working very well for me and very well for him. So we're both on the win. Um, basically, we're all crammed inside this little tent. And because this is the rest day, the idea is to just stay out of the sun and rest from yesterday's run. Tom's here. He's got um, just one little blister on his foot that he's just recuperating from. Just one, one little blister. Side, from the side, side the, inside, the, inside of the, foot. the inside of that side or <laughs> this side Both it's there. he's having yeah. a bit of a rotten time with his you feet that thing in yeah so it's basically that and then every tent at the mds is issued with an arthur so they're there just to make sure everything's okay he's like the coordinator so anything you need you just ask arthur uh, other than that, that's it, isn't it? There's no bathroom here. Oh no, hang on, the bathroom is over there. I don't know if you can see the remote little white thing. That's the Gedumpfenhausen. Uh, and uh, you can wee at the urinals or anywhere you want. Uh, or if you're French, within about four feet of the tent here. And that's about it, isn't it? So that's the tent. Now I'm not sure if you can see here, there's a massive queue in the middle of camp. There's an enormous amount of hubbub. And the reason for that is they're giving out a chilled can of coke and uh, <laughs> it may be the highlight of my week so I'm just about to join a rather large queue for one can of chilled coke <laughs> Lee, how do you feel? Well, uh, at the, uh, during the race, uh, the rest day we get a chilled can of coke so <laughs> I'm just keep this <laughs> Do we have dunes on the charity stage? Yeah. Imagine there's some death marks. <laughs> 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 it's really good. I think it's good. That's so sweet as well. <laughs> Doesn't that taste really sweet? Oh. I don't know, I've been eating a lot of sweet stuff in the last few days. So. Oh, that's amazing. That tastes. So the, um, the days of the quote-unquote killing fields are gone and what they now have is little toilet cubicles just all the way around the outside and it's actually not as bad as you think they give you this special little bag that you drop inside the toilet shaped thing you do whatever you need to do, have a little wipe and uh, take the bag out and put it in the bin by the side of the thing so the days of uh, this whole area being scattered in little landmines are long gone uh, and actually all the horror stories I've heard are, are, haven't really panned out it's kind of camping, camping style toilets basically. You can probably see the hills, the mountains in the distance here along the range, it's just beautiful. There. An abandoned building over here. We arrive at night obviously, last night I arrived here at night so I have no idea what this area looks like. That's it, so evening, that's the end of the rest day. A little bit of food, nice early night to sit here. We're setting off for two stages tomorrow. Um, two stages tomorrow, I think about an hour and a half. So the Elite Top 200 are going off later, which is includes a couple of guys from our tent, which is amazing. And then uh, we're going off an hour earlier. We've got 43k, it's a proper long, it's an actual marathon tomorrow, it's a marathon distance. Um, but you know, we kind of feel a bit haggard and a little bit more experienced out here now, you know, uh, dunes, mountains, dried lakes, oods, we can deal with it all. So a lot of people have kind of got the feelings of breaking the back of the race uh, with the big stage done and they're really now it's just a matter of tapping out tomorrow, not doing anything stupid, and staying hydrated. Uh, a lot of people are badly injured on their feet, a lot of people hobbling, which may play to my advantage a little bit. I'm currently ranking about 450. Some of the 2450 to 500, depending on the overall ranking and the information that comes in. Um, so I'm hoping to maintain that really just stay there and sit on top of the BC towards above the region. Um, but I'm in pretty good shape because a lot of people know basically my legs are good and also I have Tomorrow's 
done the day after is the uh, UNICEF Solidarity Stage. So that's it, getting up in the morning, doing it all over again. All the American in the desert. We're we getting that band in the middle now, we're getting better at it. We're not learning as we go. So we're uh, just off for a nice little bit now. in last day. We've got another day tomorrow but called the Solidarity, the UNICEF day, but today's the last day that counts towards your rankings. Um, the top 200 set off an hour and a half later than us today. Uh, it's quite early in the day, we've set up at 7am so it's cooler and yet I am soaked in sweat and it's worrying me. I'm sweatier than I've ever been. Um, I don't know why. I'm also lacking pace this morning. A lot of people are overtaking it, which I don't like. I don't know whether that's because everybody's going hell for leather, but I'm going to have to ignore them and run at my own pace. Um, but I need this sweating to calm down. I've taken an entire extra bottle of water in my bag, which means I'm carrying another litre and a half of, of um, water on top of my normal amount. Um, my intention is to guzzle the bulk of it between checkpoint one and two. Um, but not feeling it this morning. Just quite fatigued. I just don't seem to have any pace. I'm sweating a lot. We'll see if I settle in an hour or so. Things will get any better. There we go. So checkpoint one done. It's just there behind us. I'm smiling again for no other reason than I've just had a poo. Not at the checkpoint either because they don't supply toilets there. By the way, if people seem like they're going past me fast, they're leading people set off an hour and a half behind me and already gone past me. Um, no, no actual toilets at the checkpoint so uh, crossing a entirely barren landscape there are very few bushes to have a duty at so I just have to squat by the side of the course and have a poop as people go past. <laughs> it's sad times. <laughs> it's been a week of pooing in public Jumping, go, jumping into bins to get food, having a little cry in the dark. Um, <laughs> I've hit so, I've hit so many new lows. <laughs> oh dear, sorry, I got the giggle fits for no reason. I've hit, I've hit so many new lows doing this. It's been great. So there you go. Uh, that was. Checkpoint one, nice poo in front of a load of film crew people. <laughs> I didn't care. It felt amazing. Um, that's it. Everyone seems to still be going super fast, which is a worry. Um, the leader, Rashid, came past earlier with his pack of three around him. And I, being an idiot, just belted off and ran with them for about a minute and a half. It was absolutely amazing. So I was running with the leader. It felt good. Uh, that's it really, so tab on now, about 10k to the next checkpoint. Um, I'm just going to try and maintain about 11 minutes per kilometre, but I sense there is a hill and possibly some sand coming up, which may impact this, but we shall see. Yeah, sorry. 
Okay, so quite a pivotal moment for me in the race here for someone that tests a lot of kit for destruction. I'm currently wearing the Raid Light Olmo bag, uh, named after Marco Olmo, a famous Italian desert runner. Raid Light sat down with him and asked him to design the perfect bag, which he did, which I'm wearing. The perfect bag comes with shoulder straps that detach themselves entirely, stitching that comes undone, a main bit strap down here that just shears off, uh, and generally a bag that you feel is made out of tissue paper at best and if it ever got rained on would simply evaporate. But don't worry, Marco Olmo has just literally run past me wearing not his bag. So there you go, there's the ultimate endorsement. He's designed and had a bag named after him and it's so shit even he won't wear it. So, uh, good times. Okay, so I'm in between checkpoint two and three. Um, not a lot to report. Just getting some kilometers done. It's really hot. We're in epic terrain. You can probably see just nothing in every direction for miles. Chugging along, people behind me look. Um, I've had this pain between my ribs, like muscular pain, for about three or four days now, and it really hurts. And it sounds stupid, but it's the most painful thing I've got at the moment. My legs are nothing compared to this pain I've got. At the last checkpoint, I kind of asked the Doc Trotters guys for some medication, like some ibuprofen or something, but it's completely lost in translation. And I had a bit of a hissy fit and didn't say anything and just went buff and just walked off because they seem to be entirely geared towards dealing with blisters and that's it. <laughs> anyway, it's not life-threatening, it's not going to put me out of the race, it's just going to make it a bit miserable. I'm trying to massage it with my thumb as I go along, it really hurts. It's funny how these little things can get you down. Uh, other than that, doing the world's biggest water drinking competition and uh, that's it really. Just keep chugging along. So probably another hour and a half and I'll get to the next checkpoint, which will be my last ever MDS checkpoint. <laughs> I haven't even got the strength out of the camera out properly. That's it. So, uh, coming up to checkpoint three. This is a checkpoint. That's what it looks like. Little oasis in the desert. Um, it's actually my last ever checkpoint for the MDS for water. Um, you've got a little tag there to, as you come across the line, so they know you've checked in at the checkpoint, and then you fan off to one of the appropriate trucks according to your race number, where they clip a little card that you're carrying to say you've picked up water, and that's mandatory. And then you're on your way. You can stay in some tents here for a while, which some people choose to do. I tend to blast straight through them. I don't even stop. It's the only way I maintain any decent time and positioning. Um, some people will spend half an hour, an hour here at each checkpoint. So, pardon me, just shotgunning my water. There you go. Uh, so this is quite cool. We're here by the, the finish line. I've, I've finished, I've forgotten to video myself finishing. Across the other side here are the four guys from my tent. And then Max is here on this side from my tent. And our two other tent mates here, Arthur and uh, Tom, are just crossing, crossing the finishing line here now. Lesson. Yeah! Yeah! You're not gonna think you were gonna stop you. Come on! Boo! There they go. So there they go. Dancing across the line. That's eight for eight in our ten, which is just fantastic. Poor old Tom's feet look like they've been eaten by weevils, which is which is makes today even more epic for him. There you go. And we're all done. Shout out to JT for now.
so we're on the charity stage. It's very quiet, peaceful. No one's in any rush. We're all sort of ambling along. Everyone's kind of talking. It feels like a kind of end of school term or something. Um, or everyone's coming Monday for the day and they're just pissing about. But it's nice. We're just kind of ambling along. We've done about 3k so far. The pack is pretty tightly together, actually. And we're all kind of doing about three kilometres an hour, I think. Um, I guess it's kind of a nice wind down and a nice end to uh, the event. Um, but we've got no water at the checkpoint, so we're carrying quite a lot of weight at the moment. Um, there you go. So we're just coming 20 kilometres done. We're in the last 500 metres or so towards the finish. And uh, there's a couple of things I can't help but notice. The first one. Trees and clouds, and I can hear the hear a road. It's a civilization. It's been a long slog today. The charity stage is normally only 10k. We've done nearly double that. Just another extra brutal element to this particular year's course. I'm very tired, very hungry. We're all out of food. We've done this whole march today on about 400 calories, 20 kilometres in the heat. Um, I don't know. I don't know about feeling in these. I don't know about feeling euphoric crossing the line. More kind of just relieved. We'll see. Show on video next time. You're a line. So all eight of the ten are all lined up. Uh, we're about we're about to cross the line in a funnel. Uh, but this is the finish. I might rub my hand on my goose. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the finish. There's friends and family here. Um, it's been a long old walk today, but we're across the line of the tenth of eight. You can see all eight of us. Which is amazing. There's music playing. And that is the finish. They have a little hug or snuggle there. <laughs> so, uh, no hug for me then, yeah? Oh, I'm It's alright. I can never say you might notice something a bit different this morning. I'm in the uh, Berber Palace Hotel in Morocco. Having a cup of coffee with cutlery. I've had a shave. I've had three showers now. Uh, my feet still aren't clean. And I've had an opportunity to just think back on the whole of the week, which has been amazing. But the one thing I learned about this race this week is it had nothing to do really with fitness. It was to do with mental determination and, more, most importantly, water management. Uh, knowing when to back off and go slower to conserve your water when other people would push on and end up ultimately on saline drips. It'll probably take me about a week to process what just happened, but in the meantime, uh, I'm going to enjoy some bacon, eggs and sausage. Cheers.